Okay, uh, I'm Dr. Lindner and we're going to go over some neurology here for uh, our Delphi University students. So we're going to start with the neuron. The neuron, remember, is the uh, functional unit of the uh, neural system. And a neuron has three major components. Uh, there is a cell body, or soma, or perikaryon, and that soma or cell body houses the nucleus, which we can see is quite large. And we have these nizzle bodies scattered throughout. And what leads to the cell body are these branches called dendrites, which comes from the Greek word dendra, means tree. So these are all dendrites. And what leads away from the cell body is an axon. And these here, you can see this black line here. These black lines are neurofilaments. If we take this axon and we blow it up, microscopically, we would see this structure here. So all those neurofilaments are going to be here. And we want some sort of insulation to protect these, this type of wiring. So number seven that we can see here is called a Schwann cell. You'll remember that that's one of your neuroglial cells. And this Schwann cell's role is to engulf these neurofilaments and wrap around, wrap around, and wrap around to insulate the wiring. So this insulation that it creates in the PNS, or peripheral neural system, is called myelin or myelin sheath. So here's a Schwann cell, and here is a Schwann cell. And they wrap around different segments of the axon. And the gap or space between each myelin sheath is called the node of Ranvier. Okay, and I think the last structure are the axon terminals. And at the end of the axon terminals are the axon bulbs, which uh, house neurotransmitters. Okay? All right, let's move on to the reflex arc, the five components of a reflex arc. If we start here, this looks like the skin, and here is a receptor which picks up some sort of stimulus, and that information that it picks up at the receptor will move up a sensory neuron, also known as an afferent neuron. That sensory neuron or afferent neuron goes up and through this dorsal root ganglion and synapses in the gray matter this area called the dorsal horn and relays the information to the motor neuron or efferent neuron by way of the interneuron or association neuron which is here the motor neuron leaves the anterior horn which is in the gray matter motor neuron travels down, also known as the efferent neuron, to the effector. Okay, so those are the five components. Receptor, sensory neuron, or afferent neuron, association neuron, motor neuron, and effector. Okay, now we're going to look at the brain, and let's look at different sections of the brain first, the different components. So when we look at this view, we can see that the cerebellum is in the back. So that's, this is posterior, this is anterior, which would make this the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. I'm sorry, the frontal lobe, occipital lobe. Near the ear is the temporal lobe. This is the parietal lobe. This is all cerebrum, remember? These are all parts of the cerebrum, the largest part of the brain, not to confuse cerebrum with the cerebellum known as the little brain. Okay, and if I turn this this way, we can see the medulla and the pons. Medulla, pons, and a little bit higher up here is then the midbrain, right in this section here. This is the midbrain. If I go back to this view here, we can find that through the cerebrum, there is a groove that travels right down, right through the center here. And this groove, or fissure, is called the central fissure. 
and the central fissure is what separates two very important gyri. The gyri are the hills, we can see here, 622 and 623, and the one in front is the pre-central gyrus, and the one in the back is the post-central gyrus. The pre-central and post-central gyrus is separated by this central canal or central fissure this way. The important function of the pre-central gyrus is that this is where all of your motor control originates and in the post-central gyrus this is where all of your sensory data will end up. Okay. If we look here what we're looking at in this specific region here will, will be that. Okay, so you can see if we look at the ponds here, we can see the ponds here. So we've got the medulla, the pons, above the pons is the midbrain, and if we look at the midbrain and we turn it this way, in the dorsal aspect of the posterior, we have the quadragemina, corpora quadragemina, meaning body of four. There are superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. And the superior colliculi deal with your, uh, your eyes, the way your eyes track when you're reading something. And the inferior colliculi deal with uh, the uh, auditory response when you hear sound or a loud noise, how your head moves in the direction of that noise. That's the inferior colliculi. Um, big cranial nerves that we can see coming off. Here is the uh, optic nerve. And just under the optic nerve where they crisscross is called the optic chiasm. And there's a very important gland located next to it called the pituitary gland. And if that pituitary gland becomes enlarged, it can interfere with the impulses going through that optic nerve or tract or chiasm causing visual disturbances. And off of the pons, the very large nerve is the trigeminal, cranial nerve number five, which has three divisions, an ophthalmic division, a maxillary division, and mandibular division to that. Okay. If we look at the brain again, right here, that's your olfactory nerve with the olfactory bulb, cranial nerve number one, which is all uh, sensory for smell. Here is your optic, there's your pituitary. Okay. All right, let's look here. Here is the corpus callosum, your fornix, your lateral ventricles one and two, which is where your cerebral spinal fluid uh, flows. From lateral ventricle one and two, it's got to go into the third ventricle through the foramen of Monroe. From the foramen of Monroe, it gets into the third ventricle. It goes through another foramen, the cerebral aqueduct of Silvis, into the fourth ventricle. Here is your pituitary gland. That's your optic chiasm. Here's your pineal gland. Here's your thalamus and hypothalamus. Pons. Medulla. Medulla descends down to C1 and C2 vertebrae. That's the odontoid or dens. Cerebellum. You can see the veins of the leaf here, the white part. The white part is the arbor vitae, meaning tree of life. That's the white matter, and the gray matter around it is folia. It means foliage. It looks like a leaf. Okay. How are we doing on